Well, welcome to Vineyards Online Church. We're so glad that you could be part of our service. Of course, we're in week nine here, week 10 actually, of, of uh, not having physical services. We're meeting wherever we're at in our homes, in our, in our, in our rooms, in our cars, at work, wherever, we're all over and uh, dialing in. And God's using this, I think, to teach us some amazing lessons. We've tried to capitalize on that and talk about the lessons we can learn from this whole journey of the coronavirus. One of those is the value of being together. Sometimes we don't realize that, how important it is until we don't have that. In our American culture, we love to celebrate this idea of independence. If you're financially independent, relationally independent, if you have if you're self-sufficient, you're self-reliant, that's the secret to happiness is this myth that we've many of us have bought into. But now we have that. We're all independent. We're all isolated. And there's not too many happy people that I hear from. Uh, we are learning the lesson that really there's this incredible value of being to connected. And the Bible teaches that. It says it's, here's what it says, since we are all one body in Christ, we belong to each other, and each of us, notice, needs all the others. That's the truth of the matter. It's not about independence. It's about interdependence. We actually need one another. We need one another so that we can grow and we can uh, become all who God wants us to be. The truth is, you cannot be all God who all the things He wants you to be. You can't fulfill your purpose alone. You just can't. You need one another. We need each other. And let me let you see three reasons why what the Bible says is why we need one another. First of all, it's so that we can connect. In other words, I need others to walk with me. I need them to walk with me. What does that mean? Well, during the coronavirus uh, pandemic, these last several months, uh, that's meant being at home, but you're not just sitting still at home, you're still going to be growing. And that's what it's talking about, walking uh, just as you receive Christ Jesus. So walk with him. You see in the Bible, this idea of Christianity is a journey. You're not where you were. You're not where you're going to be. You're on this journey and we're on this journey together. Here's some, some examples out of the New Testament. It says walk in wisdom, walk in love, walk in delight. Walk in obedience, walk in the Spirit, walk as Jesus walked. And so there's this idea of this journey we're walking, and this is just a few of them, but the one that's the most important, and we see it all throughout the Bible, is to walk together. We are to walk and do this journey together. Why? Because you were never meant to walk this life alone. It's never meant that way. That's a different path. In fact, the path of walking alone, I think, is best described uh, by that song, it, by Green Day, Boulevard of Broken Dreams. It says, I walk a lonely road. The only one that I have ever known. Don't know where it goes, but it's only me and I walk alone. I walk this empty street on the boulevard of broken dreams. And then the lyrics continue. It says, my shadow's the only one that walks beside me. That's a good definition of being alone, right? Just you and your shadow. My shallow's heart the only thing that's beating. Sometimes I wish someone out there will find me till then I walk alone. That is a good description of walking alone. That is a boulevard of broken dreams. It's a pathway of not fulfilling uh, the life that God has for you. You see, God wants us to be together, to walk together. You say, Andy, I like to be alone. I like to travel alone. I like to do things alone. Why should I be with other people? Well, let me give you uh, three reasons. One is, is it safer? It is safer to be with other people. Uh, there's, there's safety in numbers. That is absolutely true. Maybe you've uh, found yourself walking on an isolated or dark road or alley in the inner city at night. I mean, it can get scary because you're alone or, so, because, or on a country road. I mean, when you're alone, you're just kind of, it's a little more eerie and you can feel unsafe. It's also more supportive when we're together. Sharon and I, a number of years ago, were, uh, I guess about four years ago, we were in Northern California. We decided to go to the Redwood Forest remarkable forest. I mean, these trees 
go up 350 feet in the air. They're 30 feet wide. Uh, but even more amazing is their root structure only goes down 6 feet or even 12 feet. And then it goes out 50 to 80 feet wide because it interlocks with the other, the other trees. You see, when a wind comes or a storm comes, those big trees would fall over with their shallow root system. But because they're interlocked with other trees... They can withstand all of that. That's a great metaphor of what it means when we walk in community with one another. We support one another, particularly through difficult times like the coronavirus, like we're experiencing. And then we're smarter. There is a collective intelligence. We can grow and become smarter with one another. I think of this verse, only fools would trust what they alone think. In other words, you have your opinion. Nobody else agrees with you. You could easily be wrong. And so we can grow when we, uh, when we have other people that are speaking into our lives. A number of years ago, I was in Arizona in Tucson There's a, with my, my family and my three boys. We decided to go spelunking into a cave called Onyx Cave up in the mountains. I'd been there when I was a kid, but it had been a long time. And so we go to this cave I've come across the, the, the opening. I go, well, here it is. We go in, and I don't remember it that way. It seems different, but I thought, well, I was, you know, it's many, many years ago. And as we go into this cave, we have our flashlights. We're trying not to get lost. We go deeper and deeper into this cave, and it starts to narrow on us. It gets so narrow, we can't actually walk. We have to start, like, going sideways, and, and it's, it's, that's not the experience at all. I think I, I know we did something wrong, so we kind of work our way back. We get to the front of the cave, and then I notice something I had missed the first time. It says this, wrong way. So I took a picture of it. Wrong way. I wasn't paying attention. Somebody else had done that and was trying to warn us. I just didn't see it. You see, when we're with other people, they can give us advice. There's, we can get more direction. We can, it can be helpful. Without good direction, people lose their way. The more wise counsel you follow, the better your chances. And so we can grow in a lot of ways. You know, one of the ways we grow when we're with people is we learn how to cooperate. We learn how to get along. This is an important skill because God wants to grow that. That's a character skill that he wants in us. Now, early in, when he created us, there with Adam, it says, it is not good for man to be alone. Here he creates Adam, puts him in the Garden of Eden. It's absolutely perfect. And yet, he says, it's still not good. It's still not good enough. Why? Because he, man's still alone. And so he creates community. God wants us to have community. Here's what God created. Two groups, the physical family and a spiritual family. The physical family is the one that you were born in. The spiritual family is the one you're born again into. The physical family is the one you didn't choose. You were just born into that, and uh, then eventually you go your own way. They eventually die. The spiritual family is the one you are put in by God. It's God's family, and you're there forever with them in all eternity. And so God says, I want you to have family. I want you to have family. He says, this is not the time to pull away from the family, the meeting. He says, and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing. You see, it is a, fa it is a habit to, to, to uh, meet together. We are creatures of habit, and we need that. And he goes, this isn't the time. You go, Andy, well, that was written almost 2,000 years ago. Well, it was. It was written in the mid-60s, uh, six, like 65 AD. And, and it was written because... The Roman emperor and the, the Senate, and all, they were persecuting Christians. So they were having to meet in catacombs. Well, that's difficult to meet in a catacomb. It's dark. It's dank. It's, uh, it's, 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 there's, they actually bury people there. There's dead people in catacombs. Uh, and, they, and they would meet in there. And so some said, Maybe I don't need to be going to church right now. Maybe I can drop out. And he's going, no, even during persecution, even though it's, you're meeting in catacombs, this isn't the time to stop. Well, I would say that that writer today would say to all of us suffering from the difficulties of the coronavirus, this isn't the time to lose that habit. You need to stay in that habit. We're creatures of habit. And so that's why we're doing online church. That's why we have online small groups. We say, stay in that 
do, keep doing that. He says, because why? We need each other. That's the reason. He goes, we need each other. You need other people, but they also need you. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage each other onward. In fact, in difficult times, we need each other all of the more. You see, God hates loneliness. So what is his solution? Community. Community is God's answer to loneliness. Community is God's answer to loneliness. Loneliness is not answered by getting married. We have plenty of people in our church that are single. In fact, we have more single people in our church than we have married people. And we have lots of single people that are in intimate, growing, meaningful relationships in our, in our church. And we also have married people that are very lonely and very disconnected and don't have that at all. And so it has nothing to do with whether you're married or not. It's all about are you in community with other people in meaningful relationships. I need other people to grow. You need other people. We need this. We grow together. And a big part of that happens in small groups. I love my small group. We're meeting on Zoom. Uh, in fact, you're welcome to be part of, the, of my group. We have one of those open groups. There's a number of open groups that are meeting. But come and, be, and say, hey, I want to be part of a small group because we need one another. Look at this verse. I love this. It says, when you gather, each of you, each one of you should be prepared with something useful at all. Notice what he's describing here. He goes, you can sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight, take your turn with no person taking over. That way you all learn from each other. He says, we can grow from one another. I think it's interesting. This does not really describe an average weekend service. Actually, it does a little more today, right? Because we have our chat box. And so we, we can share scriptures and share stories. And hey, I need a prayer request. And, and I encourage you to do that right now, right in that chat box. Just put in something like maybe your favorite verse or something that happened uh, this week that encouraged you. Or if you need prayer, we're there to pray for you. But take an opportunity because that is a unique opportunity that we have today uh, while we're doing this uh, online service. All of us can participate regardless of which platform that you're on. And so we, we need one another. Number two is we protect. We need others to watch out for me. So not only do I need connection where I need people to walk with me, I need protection. I need others to watch out for me. Why do I need protection? Because I can't cover my backside. I can't see all of my blind, side, my blind spots. Other, I need other people to help me with that. Sometimes I have something in my teeth and somebody will, who loves me, and cares about me will say, Andy, you might want to go to the bathroom and check the mirror. You got something in your teeth. I mean, how would I know that? How do you know if you have a taillight out in your car unless somebody tells you? You see, we need each other. And when we talk about protection, we say we're caring for you. We're, 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 we're uh, encouraging you. We're, we're praying for you. You need people that are championing you. Oh, look at this verse here. It says, look out for one another's interests, not just your own. So we look out for one another's interests. Now, this last few weeks, I've been talking to you about how the values of the church, like this one, caring for other people, has really been demonstrated in such amazing ways over these last uh, several uh, weeks and really now a few months because of the coronavirus. It's pulled people that from all over, all types of people, from all uh, places in, 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 in life and in society, we're all rallying together and we're looking out for other people. We're concerned about the most vulnerable. We're going to all of these inconveniences to help out others. It's amazing. I think that's why it grinds so hard when you have something like what has been in the news recently with Almond Albury, who is, who is gunned down, this 25-year-old young man. He's just taking a jog in a neighborhood. He's unarmed. He's just in this Georgia uh, uh, neighborhood just jogging down the street and these two uh, guys that uh, they grab their weapons they 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 run him down in the uh, with their with their with their truck kind of get in the way he tries to jog around and they just gun him down cold it, it just it just it's everything that we're not today today it seems like more than ever we're learning to look out for other people. And this kind of goes right against that. And it just nauseates, so, it nauseates me and so many people have been 
sharing their hurt and their, and their frustration with this on social media, on, on the television, and with one another in, in workplaces and at, in their homes. I mean, this just shouldn't happen because we're moving in a different direction. And, 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 and that's what we're praying for, certainly, not only justice for this situation, but look at this, just keep being concerned. In other words, it's not a one-time thing. It's not just this event. It's not just uh, during the coronavirus. It's something we, it's, it's a value we start to carry out. We walk out. Be, keep being concerned about each other as the Lord's followers should. We, this is the right thing to do. And, and, and the truth is, even when the coronavirus has, has, has been taken care of by either treatment or vaccine or whatever happens, there is still another enemy that is always attacking us. You know, we learned in 9-11 that there was an enemy. There's terrorists that want to hurt us. And a lot of them are uh, abroad. And so uh, we've had to, to make corrections about that. Of course, it's changed the way we do our, our, our check-ins at the airlines. And, and we say, hey, never forget, there's terrorists that want to hurt you. And the truth is, there's somebody who wants to hurt you more than any terrorist. And it's Satan. The Bible says the devil is out to harass you. He doesn't like you. He wants to hurt you. Why? Because he hates God. He wants to hurt God, but he can't. And so what's, what, what do you do when you want to hurt somebody, but you can't get to them? Well, you hurt what they love. If somebody wanted to hurt me and they can't get to me, they would hurt my wife or my kids. Something that I love. And that's what Satan does is he harasses you because he hates God and, he, and, and God loves you. And so he's from the every day, first thing in the morning, he's concocting schemes and plans to harass you, to pull you down, to discourage you, to draw you into loneliness, to draw you into discouragement, to defeat you, to make life miserable for you, to draw you into some kind of addiction, to to, to, uh, mess up your life is what he's trying to do. And so the sad truth, he has a much better chance of doing that when we're alone. The, The sad truth is that Christians, many of them are defeated. Because they're not in community. They're trying to do it on their own. They think, hey, I'll just try to do it on my own. And they never make the connection why their life is miserable, why they have so much going wrong in their life, why they can't seem to make things go well. And they don't make the connection. It's because they're trying to do it on their own. That God says, I have a plan for you. You cannot accomplish God's purpose for your life alone. You need to connect with people. You need to walk with people. And you need protect you need protection. You need to protect others. Every one of us should have somebody we're praying for and we're caring for or we're watching out for and people that are doing that for us as well because we all need that. A person standing alone, their Ecclesiastes says, can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. You see, together we have way more strength because we encourage one another and we're protecting one another. Here's a question I have for you. Who's watching your backside? Who is watching out for your soul, your spiritual welfare? Somebody who's concerned about you. No matter how strong you are, no matter how long you've been walking with God, you still need people that are concerned about you, that are praying for you, that are championing you. A number of years ago, I read this book, Uh, Between a Rock and a Hard Place by Aaron Ralston. True story, this young man was hiking in Utah there in the Blue Blue Canyon, and he slips, and a rock, a boulder, really falls on his hand. He cannot get out of this situation. He tries every book, every trick in the book, can't get out. He's alone, so he's left to either die or he takes out a pocket knife, and the only thing he can do is cut his arm off. And he escapes somehow. He puts a tourniquet on. He barely makes it out. It wears a prosthetic the rest of the life. Even pros can't do it alone. We need one another. You see, God's plan is his community is his answer to defeat. Instead of falling into defeat, trying to do it on your own, where God, and, and, and Satan will do anything he can. He'll try to take out your kids. He'll try to take out your marriage. He'll try to f- cause you to fall into some addiction, cause you to fall into so- all kinds of, of, of trouble. He, he pull out no stops. We can fall into defeat if we try to do it on our own. Notice this next verse here. 
advance to the next verse. Okay, it's, here's the verse. It's if one person falls, another can reach out and help. But if people who are alone when they fall are in real trouble. In other words, when you're alone and you fall, that's not good. That's not good. So we need connection. We need to walk with people. We need people to walk with us. We need protection. We need to pray for one another. We need to champion one another and encourage one another. We need them to do that for us. And then thirdly, we need, to, we need to grow. And so we need others to spur each other on. There's something when we are, are, are in a group, we can spur one another on. You know, some of these exercise classes, uh, these uh, circuit training classes, it's the group that really kind of creates this ethos that, hey, I want to do this. I want, I'll go extra. I'll stay hard. I'll, I'll push harder. I'll stay a little longer. A number of years ago, we were in Tucson again. This is a different trip with my kids. And uh, we decided to go to a gym. We were at a hotel and they offered this free gym experience. So we go to this, this gym that's off site and they were having this, this circuit training that was going on. And so we thought, hey, let's, let's do that. Well, that, I didn't know what I was signing up for because the guy who was in charge of the circuit training was like totally ripped. He was this burly Russian dude and he didn't, he didn't have the compassion gene. I, I mean, he just rode us so hard, and it felt like he was riding me. Uh, I think I was the weak link. There was all kinds of people there. There was women, uh, uh, men. There was young, old, all kinds. And, and, I, and I just was, I mean, I was panting. They were having us run around the building and do all these. And, and I, I mean, I just got to the point where I think I was whimpering because he came up to me and he goes, oh, it's okay to cry. You know, and my kids love that, you know, that he just, yeah, it's okay to cry. And I'm, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to give up uh, spurring one another on. That's probably not the best example, but uh, it kept me going. But we need one another to spur each other on. There's something powerful that happens. It says, when, and let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. You see, when other people are championing you, saying, you can do it. Don't give up. You can forgive that person. You can go a little harder. You can make it. Read your Bible. Go get baptized. Don't stop procrastinating. Take growth track. Get involved. Get involved in a small group. In fact, come to my small group. And you need, when you start having people and you let them into your life to spur you on, you will start to grow. You, it, it just happens. We, we spur one another on. We need one another. In fact, there's, here's what the Bible says. It says that really community is God's answer to discouragement. We see this all throughout the Bible, that, that when it's in together, we're not going to fall into discouragement because Satan loves to do that. It's his fav, favorite trick. He knows if he can get you discouraged, that he can sideline you. He can cause you to be ineffective. This is probably his most effective trick of all is getting you discouraged, giving up, throwing in the towel. So let me ask you, what is your next step? What's your next step? Because in a few weeks, you'll have gyms open up, movie theaters will open up, they'll have the restrictions. Pretty much everything will be open up. The church will be opened up. We'll be opening up probably in June is what we're expecting at this point. When we open up, what are you going to do different? Now, certainly it's going to feel a little different, right? We're going to have some... Some, some social distancing, some different things going on. But my suggestion is you make a goal today. You say, hey, I'm going to do something. I'm going to, this is, I've not been baptized yet. And we have a baptism. We're going to do it at the beach because of all of the stuff that's going on with this virus. And so it'll be April, uh, August 16th. So you can mark that on your calendar. You haven't been water baptized? Then plan to do that on August 16th out at the oceanfront with us. Or, or, or take growth track. Or get involved in a small group, or we're going to be launching our small group semester uh, right around that time when we start meeting again physically. But take, make a step. Maybe you haven't been reading your Bible very much, and you've gotten soft on that. Whatever it is, your prayer life, your generosity, your serve. We're going to be doing serve day, as we always do, uh, the second week, the second Saturday of July. Plan on being there. Put that on your calendar. I'm going to get involved. I'm going to serve our community as we always do uh, that, second, that second Saturday of July. And we're all going to do that together. But just decide, what's my next step? Let us not get tired of doing what is right. For after a while, we will reap a harvest of blessing. Now notice what it says here. If we don't get discouraged and give up, that's the problem. When we get discouraged, we, get, we give up. 
But God says, no, I want you to stay in community. Why do we stay in community? Well, it's this simple. Because we need to connect. We need others to walk with me. I need to protect. I need others to watch out for me. And I need to grow. I need others to spur me on. We all need those things. We all need them. I need them. You need them. And let's, let's pray. Let's say, God, let's help us with that. Let's not use this as an excuse to start dropping our guard, letting Satan harass us any longer. It doesn't have to be that way. God has a plan for you. The only way you can fulfill his mission and his purpose in your life is in community. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord, that you have an amazing plan for us, a plan for good and not for evil, a plan to help us to grow in our purpose, to make a difference for, in other people's lives, to make a difference in this world. Lord, I pray for everyone who is struggling with loneliness, that they would allow other people to walk along with them. God, you hate loneliness. And it has nothing to do with whether somebody's married or not. It's all about letting people into our lives, developing community, developing meaningful relationships. You say, God, help me to allow people to in my life so that I can I can have them encourage me, spur me on. I don't I don't want to be defeated. Would you say that? Say, God, I don't want to live in a place anything lower than what you have for me. You want me to ride high, to not walk in defeat, and I can't do that alone. You know, if you just admit that right now, that's half the battle. Say, I can't do it alone. Part of the reason I'm def- I feel defeated and I'm living out a defeated walk, a defeated life in, in, in spiritually and in other ways, it's because I'm trying to do it all on my own. You say, God, help me to be humble enough and wise enough to encourage other people in my life. And then this area of growing, would you say, God, help Help other people to spur me on. Help me to be that person too. I want to grow every day. This is a journey. Now, my friend, if you have never asked Christ into your life, or maybe you're far from God, it's easy because Satan has always tried to pull us away. There's 101 ways how we end up off the, in a ditch, away from God, far from him. But if that's you and you're saying, you know what, I, I'd love to be close to God. I want, I, want a, I, want a, I want a relationship with God where I'm close to Him and I feel His presence. I feel His power in my life. That's one prayer away. I invite you just to pray. Would you say, God, that's me. If that's you and you're saying, I want to have Christ in my life. I, know, I, I love the fact that God sent His Son, Jesus Christ. He died for me. The mistakes that I've made, the things I've done wrong. And I don't have to have any guilt, any shame. I don't have to live in defeat or loneliness or discouragement. Would you say, it's all about coming to Christ. If you've not done that, or maybe you're far from God, just today, right now, would you say yes to Jesus Christ? Just right where you're at. Just just say, yes, I want your plan in my life. I want your power. You say, thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you for coming to this earth and paving a way for me so that I can walk with you. Say yes to God. And then just raise your hand. There's a place for you. on. You can just type in there. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm making a commitment to Christ. Whichever platform you're on, or just raise your hand and say yes to God. Today I want you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God has some amazing plans for you, for all of us. And certainly I love to be part of this church and what God's doing here. Uh, it's, he's, he's, he's doing some, some remarkable things. One of the things we've had the privilege of doing is we've, there's so many people that are in need in our community. Uh, last, uh, well, two weeks ago, we showed you the video last week. We had 177 people come up. The cars were lined up all the way down Edwin Drive. People wanting help 
they would come up. One of the things we would give them is uh, they each got a roll of toilet paper, and they just, they love that. And we give them a bag of groceries, and and then we'd pray for them. And you know, one person came up. It was really quite remarkable. It was a lady. It, uh, she was middle aged lady, and uh, we she, we gave her her bag of groceries. We we do social distancing. We just put it in their in their uh, trunk for them. But then when we were going to pray for them, she said, "Listen, I want to give." an offering because I know what you guys are doing is making a difference. And so she gave an offering right there. She was the one who receiving food. She gave an offering. We opened it up. It was $700 bills, $700 towards the COVID-19 outreach that we're doing from somebody who was getting food and just amazing. I don't know if it was her stimulus check or what, but what a blessing, but she caught the vision. I mean, here she's She's, being, she's receiving, but she's also giving and being part of that. If you want to be part of what we're doing, here's a, some ways we give you the give button. If you're on uh, our, our website, of course, you can text to 45777 and put VCC in the amount, vineyardchurch.com. Check. Hey, listen, we're just thankful that God is working in your life. Whether you give or not, we want to bless you and just thank you and say thanks for just letting God do something great. And we hope that you get involved in community. You are welcome to be part of the community here at Vineyard, but just get involved in a church and say, hey, I'm all in. I want to be part of a community so I don't have to uh, fall into those things of loneliness or defeat or discouragement anymore. Thank you and God bless you. And we'll see you next week. Thank you for joining us on our Vineyard Church stream. If you prayed that prayer with Pastor Andy, we want to hear about it. We want to support you. We believe that it's the best decision that you can make. If you're on the Church Online platform, click that button that says, I committed my life. And that will take you to a Connect Card option where we will be able to send you information and support this new decision. If you're on Facebook, let us know in the chat or send us a private message. We would like to send you the same information. Hey, if you call Vineyard Church your home, you can actually give online right at our website, vineyardchurch.com, or you can text. You can text 45777 VCC plus the amount and give right there on your phone. We have been doing so much in our community just because the building is closed doesn't mean that we're not reaching out with our food pantry, financial resources, and giving people food gift cards so they can eat during this season. If you'd like to support that, just click the COVID-19 option. And hey, we also want to pray for you. If you have prayer requests or praise reports, send those in. We know it's a crazy time. We want to support you spiritually. You can send those right there on our website, vineyardchurch.com. Just click prayer. If you're on the church online platform, you can actually get live prayer right now by clicking the prayer button. You'll immediately be connected with one of our prayer team members who'd love to pray for you right now. Stay connected with us on social media. You can follow us at Vineyard VA on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. But hey, we're doing this next week. We'll see you right here on this platform next week. Invite somebody out. We'll see you then.